بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا First, I would like to appreciate and thank the organizers because of the topic. For past maybe two, three years, we had several discussions in theoretical level. But now is the time to come to practice. And culture and society is good topic for this purpose. And uh, but. I have some concerns about my topic, extremism and moderation. This is not an easy topic because you are surrounded by several types of extremism. And uh, so we have to survive in this area and in these uh, circumstances. But anyway, it is a good idea to have some knowledge and understanding from Ahlul Bayt and also from the Holy Quran in this regard. And uh, in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know whether it would be possible to approach the very critical and complicated topic. But hopefully, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we may do something, inshallah. <clears throat> okay. Extremism and moderation. We have three approaches. First, terminology, and then we have some idea about the scope and uh, the criteria. <coughs> the terminology, extremism, represented on both sides of the political spectrum is an ideology, particularly in politics or religion considered to be far outside the mainstream attitudes of the society or to violate common moral standards. <clears throat> Occasionally, the term extremist is used to describe groups and or individuals who have become radicalized in some way, even though the term radical originally meant to go to the root of a social problem. Terminologically, extremism is usually contrasted with certain things. Sometimes extremism contrasts with moderation, or centralism, or equalism, non-radicalism, and uh, mediation or compromise. So we have different types of meaning or extremism. <clears throat> Fields of extremism and moderation. At least we have four or five fields. First, in theology and religion, in uh, philosophy and morality, I mean moral philosophy here, in psychology and uh, in sociology and also in politics. So we have different fields in which we have to discuss about extremism and moderation. The way we may see and treat extremism. Extremism may be as a theory. Somebody says, OK, extremism, no problem. We can accept it as a theory or as a ideology or as a behavior, or as a tactic, or maybe sometimes as an illness. So somebody says extremism is an illness. We have to cure somebody who follow the way of extremism. 
views and perspectives. Different kinds of stances have emerged, such as religious extremism, political extremism, economic extremism, ethnic extremism, environmental extremism, human rights extremism, animal rights, and uh, something else. So there are different types of extremism that we have to keep in our mind. Each asserting its particular identity and each with its own potential for intolerance. <clears throat> in political level, one view, extremism is an emotional outlet for harsh feelings stemming from persistent experiences of oppression, insecurity, humiliation, humiliation resentment, resentment, loss, and rage, which are presumed to lead individuals and groups to adopt conflict engagement strategies which fit or feel consistent with these experiences. In another view, extremism is however seen by other researchers as a rational strategy in a game over power. A rational strategy in a game over power. An ideology. What about this theory? I would like to ask everybody, please think about this theory. And maybe to the end of this conference, you can give me your answer. Is this story correct or not? Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. This comes from Barry Goldwater, who in his 1964 GOP acceptance speech said, let me remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. And let me also remind you that moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. So think about this and let me know your opinion. <clears throat> in the religious level, it is claimed that on religious issues, there can be little or no compromise. It is claimed. So <clears throat> is it a right thinking that on religious issues there can be little or no compromise? Therefore, is there any logical moderation in the field of faith and religious belief? Also think about this. Is there any logical moderation in the field of faith and religious belief? Moderation and religion. There is a view that moderation runs through the heart of the great religions. Islam, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, says in this hadith narration, moderation is the best of actions. In Christianity, the Christian Bible says, let your moderation be known unto all men. In Judaism, <clears throat> the Torah teaches people of the Jewish faith that moderation in all things is a way of life. In Buddhism, Buddhists are urged to follow the middle way to the Chinese Taoists and Confucianists, the yin and yang principles define life's balance. So somebody can tell him, okay, the bottom line of all religions is moderation. Extremism and moderation in Islam. Balanced Ummah. We have argued in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, Ayah 143, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شَهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولَ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا 
and thus we have made you a medium just nation, a middle nation, an ummah justly balanced, that you may be the bearers of witness to the people and that the messenger may be a bearer of witness to you. So what does it mean? What, what's the meaning of this ummatan wasata, the balanced ummah? The balanced ummah, this balance appears in Islamic creed, i'tiqadat, in Islamic ritual procedure, in Islamic practical development, in Islamic lifestyle, in Islamic sharia legislation, law, and Islamic socio-political system. So we can see this balance in all these areas. I don't want to approach all of them, maybe I just mention some. The scope and areas of extremism and moderation. Extremism and moderation in aqidah, belief. We have both cases, extremism and moderation in aqidah, in i'tiqadat, in belief. And the middle way is al-amru bain al-amrain. I will ex explain about this. And also we have extremism and moderation in ibadah, worship. But the middle way is al-i'tidal fil ibadah. Extremism and moderation in akhlaq, ethics. The middle way is al-insaf wal-ihsan. And also we have extremism and moderation in a'mal, in deeds. So we have asrat al mustaqim So we have this type of uh, two sides and also the middle way in Islam. <coughs> so first in aqidah. In aqidah, no exaggeration in religion. Ya ahl al-kitab, la taghlu fi deenikum. Wa la taqulu ala Allah illa al-haq. In Surah An-Nisa, O people of the book, do not exaggerate in your religion, nor utter aught concerning Allah save the truth. This is in aqidah, no exaggeration. Moderation in aqidah, no jabr, predestination, no tafwiz, absolutely free will. Both are incorrect. But the best way is al-amr bain al-amrain, the middle way. There is neither complete compuls uh, compulsion or constraint on human beings, nor complete litigation or freedom. But the matter is the midway between the two extremes. And in the language of Ahlul Bayt, they call Al-Amr Bain Al-Amrain. So both cases, both sides are incorrect, false. The middle way Al-Amr Bain Al-Amrain is correct. This is in Aqidah. <clears throat> Moderation in Wilaya. Even in Wilaya of Ahlul Bayt, no excess, Golat or Golov, no delegation, Tafwil. Both sides are incorrect. We have some people in the time of Ahlul Bayt that they call Golat because they are extremists in the Wilaya of Ahlul Bayt. They have misunderstanding about Ahlul Bayt. The extremists or arbolat are those who attribute divine, divine, divinity and prophethood to the imams, peace be upon them, and ascribe to them privileges by which they, they go beyond the limit. The doctrine of delegation, al mufawwiza they ascribe to the imams creation and sustaining. So they say imams like God, for example, they are able to create, they are able to sustain, and all these things. These are qolov, these are extremism. They are rejected by Ahlul Bayt, and it is not accepted. Now, we go to worship, al-ibadah. It's very interesting that in al-ibadah, even ibadah is good, but Extremism in ibadah is not accepted. And Abi Abdullah salam, Imam Sadiq, Marra bi Abi. Imam says, Marra bi Abi wa anabit tawaf wa anahadah wa qadishtahadtu fil ibadah 
فرآنی و انا اتصاب و عرقا فقال لی یا جعفر یا بنیه ان الله اذا احب عبدا ادخله الجنه و رضی منه بالیسیر This is very important especially for our educational system because we live in this country we have to talk to our kids about ibadah, worship and all these things. This is Imam al-Sadiq with his father, Imam al-Baqir, in Kaaba. They are doing tawaf. And Imam al-Sadiq says, I was a little boy, maybe he was a teenager or whatever. And uh, I did a lot tawaf. I, because, okay, I was hadath, I was sharp, I was young, so I had energy. So I did a lot of tawaf. My father says, no, why we are doing a lot of tawaf? Just do once and it's enough. Because إذا أحب عبداً إذا إن الله إذا أحب عبداً أدخله الجنة ورزي منه باليسير Even if you bring a little bit, عبادة is enough. So extremism in عبادة is not accepted. In another hadith which is very interesting أن الصادع عليه السلام سأل عن رجل من الشيع فقالوا له يا ابن رسول الله قد تخلى عن العبادة Imam Sadr asked about one of his companions. Where is he? I don't see him. They say, okay, he just doing ibadah. He's just worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam asked, Okay, if he's doing ibadah, who is going to pay him? Who is going to pay for his bills or his uh, phones, for example, taxes and all these things? He said, okay, he has some brothers that are, that are helping him. Don't worry. فقال قال الصادق إن سباب ذلك الأخ أكثر من سبابه مع عبادته. The reward of that person who are helping him is more than his ibadah. وإنه and then Imam says وإنه قدم على النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قوم فقالوا إن فلانا صائم الده قائم الليل كثير الزج فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أيكم يكفي تعامه وشرابه؟ قال فقالوا كلنا Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kullukum khayrun min. The Holy Prophet says, okay, somebody says to the Holy Prophet, okay, that person, all the times he is fasting, he is praying, he is doing ibadah and all these things. And the Holy Prophet asks, who is going to help him, his family, his wife, his kids? He says, okay, we, to, we take care of him. Don't look. The Holy Prophet says, okay, all of you are better than him. So extremism, even in ibadah, is not accepted because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you have to go to life and... In akhlaq, in akhlaq, for example, uh, we have in Allah ya'mur bil adl al-ihsan wa yitaz al-qurba. Surely Allah enjoins the doing of justice and the doing of good to others and the giving to the kingdom. So in akhlaq also, moderation is important, idala is important, I just want to... Uh, pass all these uh, ayat and then go to the next. Uh, now, for example, in Surah Luqman, when Luqman is talking to his son and says, وَقْسَدْ فِي مَشْيَكِ وَقْزُزْ مِنْ صَوْتِكِ إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ الْأَسْوَاتِ لَصَوْتُ الْحَمِيلِ And be moderate in your pace, in your... Actually here, mashi, in some translations they say, okay, mash means to walk. Masha means who walks, for example, walking. But in another t meaning and translation, or maybe interpretation, tafsir, mash means lifestyle, the whole lifestyle. So in this ayah says, even in your lifestyle, you should be moderate, not doing too much and too extremes. OK, in uh, akhlaq also, in political, ethical, political level, no peace without justice. فَأَسْلَحُ You see? فَأَسْلَحُ بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَادِلِ So we have adl, justice, but we have sulh. If you are talking, if you are thinking about sulh, aslahu, peace, peace does not happen without adl and best. This is also in akhlaq and the politics. Now let's go to the Last part, which is the extremes and moderation in A'mal, in deeds. <coughs> in A'mal, we have just one way, and all the times we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go to Ihdina Sarat al-Mustaqim, to the right path. 
نو رایت نو لفت نو ظالین نو مغزوبین سو ان ون سایت وی هاف النصارا ان ادر سایت وی هاف اليهود ان الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز بوث سايز ار فالس اند انكوركت و رهبانيت ان ابتدعوها ما كتبناها عليهم الا ابتغاء رضوان الله فما رعوها حق رعایتها but the monasticism which they invented for themselves we did not prescribe for them so monasticism is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is one side one extreme the other side wala tajidannahum al-yahud wala tajidannahum ahrasa al-nas ala hayatin and you will most certainly find them the greediest of men for life so both are not correct or wrong غير المغزوب عليهم ولا الظالم no right no left but what is right in another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <coughs> at least I have four ayah that explains and uh, give us the direction but could we back here I have all issues وابتغ فيما اتاك الله الدار الاخره ولا تنس نصيبك من الدنيا واحسن كما احسن الله اليك سوره القصص ايه 77 and seek by means of what Allah has given you the future above and do not neglect your portion of this world so both فيما اتاك الله الدار الاخره and also من الدنيا واحسن كما احسن الله اليك this is one ayah Another ayah to show us the middle way and the moderation. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ عُنُقِكِ وَلَا تَبْسُطْهَا كُلَّ الْبَسْتِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَلُومًا مَحْسُورًا Make not your hand light like a nigger to your neck, nor stretch it forth to its utmost reach, so that you become blameworthy and destitute. This is the second ayah. The third ayah, which show us the moderation in this way ya bani adam khudhu zinatakum inda kull masjid wa kulu washrabu wa la tusrifu innahu la yuhibbul muslifin so israf is a type of extremism which is uh, prohibited in this ayah the last ayah wal ladina idha anfaqu lam yusrifu wa lam yaqturu wa kana bayna dhalika qawama and seek by means of what allah has given you the future sorry this uh, I have a hadith for the very beautiful hadith for this ayah. In the Rajadan Sa'al al Sadr alayhi salam, ma hadu tabir wa tabzir wa taktir. Paul, at tabzir and tatasadaka be jami a malik, what tabir and tulfara baadahu, what taktir and la tulfara me malika shayah. Fagal is it me bayan and yabna rasulullah, Paul. Fagabaza imam al Sadr alayhi salam. Somebody asked imam to explain this ayah. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا This ayah that you read, you can see the bottom of this uh, slide. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا No israf, no taqtir, ولكن التدبير, middle way. Imam shows the, uh, uh, an example to see the, what's the difference between taqtir and israf and tabzir. This hadith says, Imam takes something in your, his hand. And then he says, okay, if you do like this, this is israf. If you do like this something and keep it, this is taktir. But if you do something like this, this is tadbir. So there are three ways to show the israf in infaq is whatever you have, you spend in the way of Allah. And nothing in your hand. This is not accepted. Even for infaq. Even in far is good, good things. But Allah says, the Holy Prophet says, the Imam says, you are not able to do that. You are not permitted to do that. Because this is israf. Even if you say, okay, I, I spend the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, this is israf. If you do like this, and you don't keep anything for yourself. And this is taqtir or bukhul. That you keep everything for yourself and pay nothing. This is both. This is taqtir. But Imam says, if you do like this, 
a little bit less money and you pay to others, and then you keep some of them for yourself. So this is takti. So in this hadith, it showed us the way of moderation even in infaq. And Imam Ali salam to his companion called Hamam says, The God-fearing, Muttaqeen, are the people of distinction, and the, their speech is to the point. Their dress is moderate, and their manner is humble. So they keep their eyes close to what Allah has made unlawful for them. And they put their ears to that knowledge which is beneficial to them. In uh, the same hadith, Imam says to Hamam, this is a very beautiful hadith, and there are many things about extremism and moderation in this hadith. The speculality of anyone of them is that muttaqin, them means muttaqin, is that you will see that he has a strength in religion, determination along with leniency, faith with conviction, Eagerness in seeking knowledge in forbearance, moderation in riches, devotion in worship, gracefulness in starvation, endurance in hardship, desire for the lawful, pleasure in guidance, and hatred from greed. And uh, he performs, this is very interesting this, in this hadith, he, it means the muttaqi, he performs virtuous deeds, but still feels afraid. He performs virtuous deeds, but still feels afraid. In the evening, he is anxious to offer thanks to Allah. In the morning, his anxiety is to remember Allah. And conclusion, summary and conclusion. What should we do? First step, we have to illuminate the terminological perspectives of the issue and clearly distinguish the different fields and usages of each side. Second, there are many Quranic verses and hadith of Ahlul Bayt that warn against extremism and that call to moderation, balance, and justice. We also need to be reminded of the evil consequences of extremism and its severe hardships on people. On the other hand, we have to think about the benefits and good consequences of moderation in our individual and social life. Now, <clears throat> the midway preserves moderation or moderateness. The midway is the center of guidance. If the person deviates from this point of even a bit. This way or that way, there is sheer misguidance for him or her. That midway is that he should neither bend towards this world to such an extent as to ignore the next life, devoting himself entirely to this one, nor should he abstain, abstain from this world so as not to have any connection with anything of it, confining himself to some corner, leaving everything else. And the last point, consequences of moderation. This moderation in Islamic law, in faith and acts of worship, transactions, rulings, and legislation, made the legislation valid for people in every time and place that we discussed last year about ijtihad and mentioned this point that ijtihad means to find out the moderation, the midway, all the times, not to extremes. Releasing the nation from underst underestimation and exaggeration that we see in many of the canons of human beings that are uncommon and uncompatible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.